Howdy folks. Let's go over the browser object that WebDriver IO provides. If you use the WebDriver test runner, like we've been doing with all of these videos, you have access to a global browser object in every test. And this object provides information about different things like capabilities of what browser it's running, uh, the session. It also has commands for all of the WebDriver API as well. We will get into that a little bit in the next video on what API commands are available. But for now, one of the main things that it will provide is the capabilities. The capabilities give you information about the current browser that you're running. Certain things like is JavaScript enabled true, the browser name, the Chrome driver, if you're using Chrome, the version, a few different things. You can also access your full config file from this as well. So let's just, um, let's log a little bit of this and see what happens. So I've created a new browser.test.js file. So let's just let's log the uh, browser object and see what it actually returns. Let that run. All right, so we've logged it and you can see it has a session ID. The session ID is the, the, the browser session. So every time you run a test, it creates a new browser session. So that's what that session ID is. Now this is the capabilities of what we sent it or what it actually returned based on what we sent it. So browser name of Chrome, we're using Chrome driver 2.4.1 right now. Handles alerts, that's touch screen. So there's a few different things that you might find useful in some of your tests, kind of depends. But you also have a config object. So you just do browser.config. What this does just gives you the options that are specified in your config. So you can see we have port 444, synchronous is true, our specs. It actually adds on a little bit to this. Um, a wait for interval. So you can see that these are all in there. Wait for interval. Wait for timeout, wait for interval right here. You can see that. So maybe you need to access that. Kind of depends. But you can also set your own config variables in here as well that you would have access to every single test. So I actually added one. I added Willy B. This is just a generic uh, sample that I added, but we're now going to have access to that in this global browser object. And so we can it's in the it'll be in the config. So we just do browser.config. That run and you'll see that it puts it at the end. You'll see it, Willy B and hello, which is Willy B, hello. So it gave you that. So that's pretty cool. So if you need to, you can specify your own commands. It, it'll vary on what you would actually put in here. Maybe you want to do a different URL based on your CI development or something like that, that you have easy access to. I don't know, it's kind of up to you on what you need that for. Um, the other thing that the browser object will provide us is things for mobile. I haven't gone into much mobile in this series, but I will make a series specific to mobile. But for now, you can do a driver global object. So br the browser and driver global objects are the same. It just makes a little bit more sense to use a dr the driver name for mobile. The, a browser doesn't really make sense for mobile. But you can do driver.ismobile to check if it's mobile, check if it's Android. And you can do different things like that. Uh, one, one example that the docs provide is using it for page objects um, to determine what, if you're on Android or if you're on iOS, um, and different things like that.